This right here is the one tool for everything that you need. And what I mean by that is you launch this tool. It doesn't install on your machine at all. You just run it and it sits there. You can install pretty much any piece of software. We're getting and expanding this almost daily. I've spent over 50 something hours just in the past 30 days on this tool continually evolving it and you've probably seen other videos on my channel about it uh, it's kind of crazy to see its evolution but let's go over some of the big updates here kind of walk through this and I actually will walk through all the new improvements to it because there's quite a few and also uh, if you want to contribute to it I'll show you how to do that as well so right now uh, we added descriptions for everything so if you're like want to hover over something it'll give you a little tool tip and go hey this is what this piece of software does and let's say you're like hey what is a uh, heroic games launcher that's that's something different click it and it'll actually pull up the supporting software site so you're like oh it's Epic Games Launcher, but it doesn't suck. That's pretty cool. So it shows you all these really neat projects. Great way to uh, see a bunch of new open source stuff. Most of this is open source software. There's a couple like Adobe Reader and other nasty software in here that you pretty much need to use in Windows. So I've included those, but for the most part, I try to elevate most of the open source community and other projects so you can easily install we also have the upgrade all command so let's say you're doing something you can just click upgrade all anything you install through this it'll go through check all the software that's installed and then upgrade it for you so really cool and if you want to see hey what software do i have installed you can just click get installed It'll go through and say, hey, you have all these things installed on your system. And if you want, you can actually install the certain selection by just clicking it and uh, or just clear and pick those specific ones you do want to uninstall. So great way to do that. The tweak section, obviously, with not too much has changed here. We've added some really cool stuff, some optimizations in Windows. Uh, one of the big ones I did was the Toretto optimizations for IPv6. Now, IPv6 is a really uh, good feature for a lot of things with IPv4 running out of addresses and other things. But a lot of people don't realize there's a lot of tunneling and transitions that happen that make your internet go a little slower when using IPv6. There's this translation, if it goes from IPv4 to IPv6 or IPv6 to IPv4, a lot of times when it's translating that, it causes a lag. And uh, disabling Toretto is actually recommended now. So I'd, I'd actually check this and then just hit run tweaks. Or if there's other stuff in here, let's say you need to do a cleanup, just do those. Or if you wanna change the DNS, you can do that. But very simple, just run the tweaks. It'll go ahead and do the disk cleanup for you and then uh, also change it over into the proper way to use IPv6 when meaning, hey, if it requests IPv6, you everything's capable of doing IPv6, it'll use it. But if it is not, it'll just use IPv4, so you shouldn't have any latency. And if you look at the window that I launched it from, I'll show you how to launch it as well here towards the end, but it'll actually show you the actual tweaks that are made here uh, on the disabled components. Changing this to one actually disables the tunneling feature, but does not disable IPv6. You can still use IPv6, but only if it's native, uh, which is really good. Uh, and some other little quick little tips here i'd probably go into config tab we added some other things just quality of life enabling registry backup uh this is kind of cool this was recently added by another contributor meaning every uh day it'll actually back up your windows registry and you might be thinking well doesn't windows back up your registry anyways uh it used to but they microsoft removed that feature so actually this will will fix it which is nice and then if you want, I also recommend enabling legacy F8 support. It used to be, this is another feature that was removed from Windows, but you can add it back in just by clicking these and just saying install features. Uh, whenever your system's starting up, you could press F8 and then say, hey, I want to go to safe mode. Microsoft removed that feature, but this adds it all back in with the registry backup. Highly recommend doing these tweaks as well. And if you do run into problems, we have a bunch of little uh, fixes there for like resetting the network and corruption. Uh, one big thing too, I mentioned this on the last video I did on this tool, Winget reinstall, a lot of Winget problems in recent releases of Windows. Click this button and it will reset your Winget to how it should be and reinstall it. So if you do run into, hey, I'm clicking things on the install tab and it's not installing, 
come over to config, click Winget reinstall. Updates, I haven't changed. I'm about to overhaul this section. Usually I just come into this and do recommended settings uh, just so I don't get all the bleeding edge updates, which typically introduces bugs and also makes your system slower because it's constantly updating. This kind of puts it on a good business release cycle. And then MicroWin, this is something that we've been working on uh, for a good bit. We've done a lot of patches to. Uh, it's still not quite 100% there, but we're getting to the point where it's going to make the perfect ISO for you. Uh, so you just download the ISO from Microsoft, feed it into here, and then it cleans it up for you. So think of like NT Lite or many other things that get a, a clean version of Windows uh, right out of the gate on an install. Uh, we'll eventually make this thing happen. We've had a couple bugs with like Explorer and, and uh, some other uh, services not starting properly with the ISO, but we're working through that. So that's kind of one thing I wanted to do, but I actually wanted to show the release notes here and give credit where credit is due. All these people have contributed, and if you want to see exactly what it's done, uh, we've done a lot of commits uh, by a variety of different people. Thousands of lines of code have changed. We've added and removed packages. A lot of the structure has changed as well. You can see everything here is what has changed and been committed since the last video I've made uh, quite a bit. We can see like some search errors and bugs that were fixed as we went through uh, some more localization. I know a lot of Spanish speaking uh, people had issues with a variety of different things in the toolbox. Most of those localization issues should be fixed now. And this is the last big one that I just committed today, uh, which added a lot of efficiency fixes and a big shout out to Conti. He was probably one of the biggest committers of this past month where he fixed a lot of things with the GUI and was the original author of MicroWin. So I want to give him a big shout out as man, uh, a lot of these fixes wouldn't be available without his contribution as well, uh, along with all these other people you see down here quite a bit of contribution so thank you guys so much and i also wanted to show you the actual adding of applications here on this side what we did was instead of editing the gui every time uh, you can actually add whatever you want just wpf install and then usually a, a short name for that application and then just you need the supporting documentation along with it so you have to add the description you have to add the link you have to add the context so if you do want to contribute to the project one make sure it's the test branch also make sure you have every field filled out if you don't it always gets denied i've also added unit tests and a lot of the unit tests in here double check the code so i'm only human sometimes i might make a bad commit but the unit tests are supposed to keep me honest and, and also double check everything that gets committed. So let's say I approve something through code review. Uh, it would actually go through a unit test and then spit out, hey, this is wrong. Really cool stuff. I've been working on this the last week or two, and most of it is, is polished and any syntax errors won't get committed in the main branch because the unit test will catch it before it goes over, in theory at least. It's also kind of wild. And this past year, uh, I've committed to doing about 1,500 commits. We're going to double up the commits this year. We're going to do a lot more in the open source realm. I've actually been doing a lot more code review. This used to be almost one, two, five percent uh, for, you know, I'd say 2022 for sure. 2023, it started increasing. But uh, this past several months, a lot of contributions have happened and I've been doing a lot of code review where my commits used to be well over 90% of what I did on GitHub. So one, thank you guys for contributing on this side of the rings. Huge, huge shout out to everyone that's done that. It makes it to where I become a better coder and I'm learning from all these contributions, but also able to fix things. And also a big shout out to everyone that supported the project, whether from a GitHub star or buying the executable wrapper. This isn't needed by all means, it's more of a donation uh, as the executable wrapper uh, is not uh, needed to run. If you do wanna run this without paying any money, you can just by going terminal admin, just right clicking down here and then just doing an IRM and christitus.com forward slash win. That's, that's how you run it. And if you want to run it a bunch or just kind of keep it on your desktop, what you can do as well under tweaks, there's the create shortcut. So if you want to create a desktop shortcut, you can actually just create that and then just right click and run that as admin and it'll relaunch the script anytime you want. But just know it never does install on your system. Once you hit exit, 
it, it's basically off. So it's not a piece of software you're installing. You're just running a script. And that's really what all of this is. And we're going to continue involving it with all these contributions. I've been dedicating a ton of time. So I'm sorry for the lack of videos in December and this bit. I'm trying to ramp up and make more videos. And you're just going to see a lot more live streams over on Twitch as well. I do take all those, chop them up. So if you do want to watch them and you're like, I hate Twitch, I'm not going over that site. Totally get it. I also put them over on Titus Tech Talk, which is my secondary YouTube channel. So thank you for everyone that has supported me. And I just am so psyched about this new year, learning more about coding, really evolving things and making this the one tool that can do everything. So if you want to tweak your system, you want to optimize it, you want to install software, you want to create a new ISO, let me know down in the comments. What would you like to see? What can I do better? because we're going to get this new year and I am so excited to see everything that is uh, going on. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.